Hello Java developers! My name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to use Spring with R2DBC. The R in R2 stands for Reactive and it's to a regular SQL database. So let's giddy up! This screencast is based on a blog post that we published way back in May of 2021, but you'll see it's recently been updated for Spring 2.5.6. If you were to click on the last updated one, it tells you what changed right there. And then also up here at the top, you can click on the GitHub repo, and that'll open up all the completed code that we will do today. I also have this demo script that I created called demo.adoc. Adoc for ASCII doc. And if I click on the raw version of it, I have an ASCII doctor plugin up here. That allows me to toggle it and make it look good. So in this demo, I'll show you how to use Spring Web Flux and R2DBC to provide reactive non-blocking access to a relational database. We're just going to use H2 in this example, but you could use Postgres or Oracle or any sort of you know regular SQL database. And you'll see how to build a secure OAuth2 protected app and stream its data. You'll need Java 11 installed and an Okta developer account or the Okta CLI. So I'll put this on the left here. And then I'll open up a terminal. I do have Java 11 installed. And I do have the Okta CLI installed. And so if you need the Okta CLI, you can go to cli.okta.com and it'll pull up the instructions for your operating system. You can also click on here and it'll open it up to see how you can do it with Linux or Mac OS or even Windows. And then at the end of each step, there may be something in brackets. That's gonna be IntelliJ's live template. So if you go to my repo at mrabel slash IntelliJ Live Templates or Idea Live Templates, you can learn how to import those templates into your own IDEs. The next thing we'll do is we'll go to start.spring.io to create an app with the following settings. A group of com.octa.dev, an artifact of octa-r2dbc, and then package, and then we'll include JPA, r2dbc, reactive web, octa, h2, and lombok. And I already have this link right here that'll load all that up for us. And then we can generate it, download it, and expand it. So now we're going to the downloads directory and open that up in IntelliJ. Then I'm gonna open up a terminal and I will run Okta register to create a new account. I already have one, so it prompts me and says, hey, do you really wanna create a new one? I'm gonna say no. And uh, if you already have one, you can do Okta login and it will do something similar where it prompts you for your URL. And if you don't wanna use a CLI, you can go into developer.okta.com slash sign up and you can sign up that way. And then you can log into your tenant and you know configure everything through a browser. So I'm gonna do Okta apps create and the application name of Okta R2 DBC works just fine. And we're gonna do a web app. And then we're going to choose the Okta Spring Boot Starter. And I'll select the default redirect URIs. And what this will do is it'll go ahead and create an OIDC app on Okta. And it'll specify those redirect URIs. It will use authorization code flow, the most secure form of OAuth. And so that writes everything to the source main resources application properties. If we search for that, there it is. And it's got all our settings in there. You don't need this in there, so I'm just going to remove that. You will also need a path to the Spring R2 DBC data source. In this sense, we're going to just put it into a test DB file and we're gonna do that in memory. And then we'll need to enable R2 DBC repositories right here in the main class. So just add that annotation. And then we'll also enable Webflux. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. And let's create a user entity in a new database package. And then this will have an ID, private long ID, and an email. And then we'll go ahead and annotate with ID. And this is where you can really mess up. You don't want to use the JavaX persistence ID. You want to use the Spring Framework data annotation ID. And then generated value, generation type is sequence. And then we'll go ahead and use Lombok to generate all the getters and setters as well as two string and equals on that class. And just a, a word of warning, if you don't have the Lombok plugin installed in your IDE, you will need to go to this link here, which is setup overview. And it shows you how to configure each of the various IDEs to support Lombok. You don't need Lombok for this tutorial if you run Maven from the command line whenever you start the app. But if you actually want to start it from your IDE, you will need to configure Lombok for your IDE. The next thing is to configure an, a user repository. 
this is an interface so we want to change this to interface and then this will extend our 2 dbc repository and it's going to take a user entity and an id of long and then we're going to define one method this is going to be a flux and it's going to return a flux of user entities similar to a list but in reactive it's a flux because it's a stream of data and then find by email and we'll just do that string of email and then we need to annotate it with repository so some things to note between a r2dbc repository and something like a jpa repository is methods like find by id instead of returning an actual entity they'll return a mono which is the nomenclature for a, a single item in reactive programming and project reactor and then find all will return a flux of entities um, but it's called a flux because it's a stream of data so it's never ending in the sense of it can always have more data that's how the whole reactive streams works and then we'll create a user details and a db user service in a domain package and this is where my shortcuts come in called live templates so i'm going to type this uh simple thing and boom it's going to spit out a whole bunch of code so if you look it's user t details that implements oidc user and it basically has a constructor and then allows you to get claims and user information, ID token, attributes, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll create a DB user service. And this implements OAuth2 user service, and it'll basically take in a user repository. So this automatically loads the users into the database. You can see it finds them by email and looks up and then saves them right into the database. So it is it is blocking in this sense, and I just want to get something working here with OAuth and the user, and then we'll worry about streaming data and non-blocking. And then we'll create a security config class. So this is in the config package. And what this does is it enables WebFlex security. It has a user detail service that's injected into the constructor. Or actually, it's a reactive user detail service, so it just sets that up. And then it disables CSRF because we're just creating an API. We don't care so much about forms in this example. And then it's going to allow everyone to go to the root. Um, but everything else is going to require it be authenticated. It's going to enable OAuth2 login. And then once you've logged in, it's going to go to this protected endpoint. So now what we'll do is we'll create an HTML client so we can see that data. So in the resource directory, we'll create a pages directory and an index.html in it. And it's just a simple HTML page that says hello. And then we'll create another protected page. And this one is just showing, hey, you logged in, you're successful, right? This is protected by Spring Security. The next thing we'll need to do is create an application router. And so how this router works is it's got that index and the protected HTML and it just routes, you know, from index right to that index, from the root to the index and to protect it. So it's basically the mapping from your request to the HTML pages. And then here's how it works. It, you know, returns a content type of text HTML and reads in those files and buffers them out to the client. The next thing we'll want to do is create a database schema that we can store these users in. So this will be in a schema.sql file. And so if you're using Spring Boot 2.4, you actually have to do some extra work to load this schema.sql. With Spring Boot 2.5, you don't need to. So just by uh, creating this, it'll pick it up and create the schema. So we just have that user entity table, and then we can run it with MVN Spring Boot Run. Now, if we open up a browser and go to localhost 8080, you can see it says hello. We can go to protected. That'll redirect us to Okta to log in, and then it'll say login successful. So you might be thinking, well, where was the Okta login? Well, let's try that in a private window because I was already logged in. So it didn't prompt me. Brings up a prompt for my credentials. And now we're logged in. So you can see all of that's working. Now let's stream data from R2DBC to a web page using Spring Web Flux and R2DBC. So we'll create a new entity. This will be called Heartbeat Entity. And I did wonder, is Heartbeat one word or two? It's actually one word. So there you go. I looked it up. And uh, this one, we're going to just uh, write by hand. So we're going to have a private long ID. And then we'll annotate it with ID again. 
Make sure and get the right one, not from persistence. And sequence. And then we'll create a repository for it. That extends R2DBC repository and heartbeat entity and it takes it long. And you'll see that's all we need to do except for annotate it and turn it into an interface. So repository, let me make sure it's an interface here. And that'll allow us to do all kinds of things. So if we were to go to our two DBC repository, you can see there's a, a sorting one that does the find all. If we were to go back, we can do query by example, it has find one, find all, all kinds of stuff. And then, uh, yeah, pretty slick there. And then we can add the schema for that table to our schema file here. And then we will go ahead and add a heartbeat service. Let's take a look at this. First of all, it's it's wondering, you know, why can't I uh, set the timestamp or the text or the username? Well, that's because if we look at the heartbeat entity, we forgot to add the Lombok data annotation. And so if you don't have Lombok installed as a plugin in your ID, you might see something similar. And so you just need to configure that plugin, it'll work. And you'll see similar to what I have. So in this example, we're injecting the heartbeat repository into the constructor. You don't need an auto wired anymore in spring. Um, this is every one second, it's going to create a new heartbeat entity. And then it will go ahead and, uh, you know, generate a random string for the uh, text and set the username to system and return that to a client. So now we will need um, to enable scheduling right here. So we can do enable scheduling and that's needed for this scheduled to be picked up. Then we'll open application router and we'll add a new route. And you'll notice, make this a little bigger. It's uh, for the heartbeats, it will every one second, basically find all the heartbeats, zip them up and send them to the client. And so we do need to add the heartbeat repository as a constructor. We can go ahead and create that with our IDE. And then we can modify that protected.html. And this uses jQuery. You can see we pull it in from Ajax Google APIs and we will use an event source to talk to those heartbeats. And then we will just display them in a table every so often. So restart the server. And if we go to localhost 8080, it'll prompt us to log in. And now you see those heartbeats coming through. So you can see it both in the log back here and then on the client as well. So I think that's pretty slick. I know this is a very simple introduction to R2DBC, but this heartbeat service, right, is a lot of it as well as the heartbeat repository. And it's just a nice way to be able to use reactive nomenclatures in a Webflux app to talk to a SQL database. And so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you uh, want to find the code on GitHub, that's at OctaDev Octa Spring Boot R2DBC example. And you can click on there to go to the blog post and read that as well. If you like this screencast, follow me on Twitter. You can also follow my team on Twitter at Octadev and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Octadev. I hope you have a wonderful day and come back for more. Cheers.